Welcome back to my series of videos on mathematics for economists. In this video I'm going to discuss why when we consider optimization problems given inequality constraints, the Lagrange multiplier lambda is never negative, it's positive or equal to zero. Whereas if we consider optimization problems given equality constraints, the Lagrange uh, multiplier can be either negative or positive. I was approached by a student with this question and the uh, the intuition the student had looked something like this. I'm going to push a graph into the into the picture. Um, the student said, so let's uh, uh, consider a situation like this where we have an, an objective function that is given by say this, this, this plane here um, and we have a constraint that is given, say, by this paraboloid that we're seeing, then clearly we can uh, see geometrically that the, the gradient of f, which will be pointing in this direction, the steepest ascent, is uh, in a different direction from the gradient of uh, the, the constraint, let's call it g, given by this paraboloid, which is uh, the, the direction of steepest ascent is somewhere in this direction. Um, so so why, how, how come that if we consider this as an, as an inequality problem where uh, we want to maximize uh, f, the objective function given by this plane, so this is actually 3 times x plus 4 times y, so we want to maximize 3 times x plus 4 times y, given uh, that all points x and y sh shall lie underneath or on this surface of this, of this paraboloid. I said, mm, that's, a, that's a good question. Let me sit down and come back with a good answer. Uh, so I decided to make this a video because this uh, is, is, is sometimes a cause for confusion. And it's actually kind of a subtle point. Uh, so let's try to understand why, uh, if, we, if we understand the situation as, a, as maximization given an inequality constraint, we're still going to see a positive uh, Lagrange multiplier. Whereas if we actually phrase this problem as a, an optimization problem given an equality constraint, we will see a negative Lagrange multiplier. So let's, let's get this straight. Let's begin with the, with the situation of an equality constraint. So let's say that we want to, we want to maximize f of x and y such that, which is 3x plus 4y, such that the constraint minus x plus 1 half squared minus y plus 1 half squared plus 2 is equal to 0. This is our constraint g of x and y. Okay, and we again we consider first the equality case. Um, and there we will see that indeed uh, our intuition is correct. Um, let me uh, let me graph the situation. Uh, indeed, our intuition is correct. Lambda is going to be negative because what we're looking at is all points x and y that lie on this circle here. All points x and y that lie on the circle here. Now we want to maximize 3x plus 4y, which is this, this plane here, such that uh, we only use points from the circle. And of course we expect that we're going to pick a point somewhere around here, because that is going to correspond to the highest possible value of 3x plus 4y that we can achieve. Um, and in that point, uh, we're going to have a gradient for g for the constraint function, which is the paraboloid, pointing in that direction, and a gradient for the objective function, which is the, uh, which is this plane here, pointing in that direction. So we're not going to point in the same direction. We're going to point in exactly opposite directions. This is going to be the result of the Lagrange multiplier here. So let's uh, confirm this in the analytically here. Um, so we proceed as usual. So again, the, the, the statement of the Lagrange multiplier theorem is that 
the gradient of uh, f is given as a multiple of the gradient of g. The gradient of f here, of course, is uh, 3 and 4, and the, the gradient of g um, is uh, minus 2x plus 1 uh, with respect to x, and minus 2y plus 1 with respect to y. Uh, excuse me, minus. Okay. Um, the Lagrange auxiliary function is given by um, the objective function 3s plus 4y minus lambda times the constraint minus x plus 1 half squared minus y plus 1 half squared plus 2. And we can consider the first order conditions, which are uh, partial derivative with respect to x equal to 0. This would be 3 plus lambda times 2x plus 1 um, shall be equal to 0 with partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to y, which is 4 plus lambda times 2x y plus 1 equal to 0. So from this we get two different expressions for, for lambda. One is minus 3 over 2x plus 1, and the other is um, minus 4 over 2y plus 1. And finally, the derivative with respect to lambda, which just repeats the, the constraint minus x plus 1 half squared minus y plus 1 half squared plus 2 equal to 0. Um, now again, uh, uh, we are in the situation that we have a system of uh, uh, three equations and three unknowns, x, y, and lambda, and so uh, since these equations are uh, nonlinear, uh, we just proceed by repeated substitution until we boil the whole situation down to one equation and one unknown, which hopefully we can solve. Um, so let's start with... Um, with the last one, uh, so we write we write y plus one half squared is uh, two minus x plus one half squared. So y is plus minus the square root of uh, two minus x plus one half squared minus one half. Um, now, we can plug this in to, say, the second equation, so into, into this one here. Uh, so we have 4 um, plus lambda. Now we use, because we're using the second equation, we're using the lambda from the, from the first equation. So plus lambda is minus 3 over 2x plus 1. And then... For, uh, for y here, we replace with the expression that we just found. Um, so we write plus minus uh, 2 times y, so 2 times the square root of 2 minus x plus 1 half squared minus half 1 half. Um, this should be in parentheses, so this is not minus 1 half. This is minus 1, and uh, and we get a plus 1, because there's a, this is a, this is 2y plus 1, so the 1 cancels, and the whole thing must be equal to 0. All right, so we can, uh, uh, this is 4 minus 3 over 2x plus 1 times... Uh, Plus minus the square root. I take the two inside, so this is eight minus two x plus one squared minus one plus one goes away, equal to zero. Uh, okay, so let's multiply through with two x plus one. So we get eight x plus four minus three times uh, plus minus the square root of eight minus two x plus one squared equal to zero, uh, so we have plus minus the square root of eight minus two x plus one squared is equal to eight third 
x plus the third. So if I didn't make a mistake, please check. And uh, if I did, then please comment, and I'm going to correct this. But I hope this is uh, more or less without accident here. Equal to eight third x plus four third squared. Okay. Um, so so again, we have one. We have cheap one equation, one unknown. So we're just working this thing uh, until it gives away what x is. Um, so okay. So we have uh, two uh, polynomials of second order going on here. Um, we can bring them over to the other side. So this is. Uh, uh, 0 equal to, we can bring 1 over to the other side, 0 equal to, uh, no, let me just multiply that up, uh, 8 minus 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals uh, 64 ninth x squared plus 64 ninth x plus 16 over so now I bring it over to the other side, so I get uh, 0 is equal to uh, 64 over 9 plus 4x squared plus 64 over 9 plus 4x plus 16 over 9 plus 1 minus 8. Good. Uh, and this is... Um, 4 times 9 is 36, 36 plus 64 is 100, 100 over 9 x squared, plus, same thing here, 100 over 9 x minus 47 over 9. So now I multiply 3 by 9 over 100, and I get x squared plus x minus 47 over 100 equals 0. Okay, now we can solve um, x 1 and 2 are given by minus 1 half plus minus the square root of 1 quarter minus minus plus 47 over 100. And uh, well, 1 quarter is 25 over 100, so 25 plus 47 is 72 over 100, so I get minus 1 half plus minus uh, square root of square root of 72 over 100, this is my y, so this is, uh, this is minus 1 half plus minus the square root of 18 over 25, uh, so this is minus 1 half plus minus the square root of 18 over 5, so get two candidate points here, uh, minus 5 plus 2 times the square root of 18 divided by 10, or 2 times the square root of 18 minus 5 divided by 10. So numerically, this is about uh, 0 0.3485, and this is minus 1.3. Okay, so these are my candidate points for x. I can uh, go back into my into my original equation here, um, into this one, and uh, then you can uh, convince yourself that that x one equal to zero point three or roughly equal to zero point eight four five uh, solves plus case of the square root and x2 roughly equal to minus 1 point, uh, what was it, 3485? 3485, excuse me, 3485, um, uh, 1.3485 solves the negative part. Um, what is y? Hmm? Uh, we had y given by um, plus minus the square root of 
2 minus x plus 1 half squared and the whole thing at minus 1 half. Uh, so now we want to plug in for x. So we get positive part, let's call it y1, square root of 2 minus At least this is x. Well, we have we have uh, we have minus one half here in x, right? On, on board two, and so uh, uh, we're taking we're taking plus one half here, so that just goes away, and we're left with uh, uh, the square root of eighteen over twenty-five. But then we square, so the square root goes away. Uh, so we're just left with uh, with eighteen over twenty-five here. And then the whole thing minus one half. Uh, this is uh, the square root of uh, two and the five minus one half. And this is numerically more or less zero point six three four four. And then we have y two, which is the negative square root two minus eighteen over twenty five. That just stays the same, minus one half, and that is minus the square root of 32 over 5 minus 1 half, and this is numerically minus 1.6314, give or take. Um, so we get two candidate points. x1 and y1, because x1 solved the positive part, so x1 corresponds to y1. This is roughly 0 0.3485, 3485, and 0 0.6314. And if we evaluate the objective function 3 times x1 plus 4 times y1, we find that this is roughly 3.5711. The other candidate point is x2, y2, because remember, x2 solved the negative part, so it corresponds to y2. This is, give or take, minus 1.3485 and minus 1.6314. And these are negative, so I can already see that, that 3x2 plus 4y2 is not going to do anything that's better for me here. It's minus 10.571 if you punch it into your calculator. Um, and uh, 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 that's of course not maximizing f. Um, the, the 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 gradient of g in the maximal point that we found now. So let me uh, somehow uh, let me somehow indicate that this this is the maximum. Um, the gradient of g in this point zero point three four eight. 0.6314 is given by minus 2x minus 1, right? So minus 2, 0 0.3485 minus 1, minus 2, 0 0.6314 minus 1. This is, of course, negative, and it should be equal to lambda times uh, uh, 1 over lambda times the gradient of f. So we can already see lambda must be negative, right? This is minus 1.1697. This is, of course, not. Uh, minus 2.2628. And uh, if we relate this to, to delta f, uh, which is uh, 3 and 4, then we see that lambda uh, is actually equal to something like more or less minus 1.7678. Okay, uh, let's pause here because we solved the problem given an equality constraint, right? And we found that for the equality constraint, indeed, the uh, geometric intuition here. Let me uh, let me bring the picture back into the into the picture. Uh, the geometric intuition here that the gradient of f and the gradient of g point in opposite directions, and therefore lambda is, is, is negative, must be true. Fine. Now. Well, which, which point? Which point did we find? Um, 
Put a sphere into into the point. So if you look at it from above, this is the point on the circle. As expected, it is on this side where we can achieve the highest uh, value of the objective function 3x plus 4y on this uh, on this plane here. And you can see this correspond to what we expected. Um, Good. So now we want to understand how come that if we now pose this problem as a maximization given an inequality constraint, that lambda then must be positive, puzzling me. All right. So uh, for that, we have to phrase the whole problem as an inequality constraint. So I'm going to, I'm going to erase what is on this graph and just plot the original situation again. Here we go. So now, if we now understand this as maximizing 3x plus 4y values on this plane such that x and y come from underneath or on the surface of this paraboloid. Um, how come lambda must be positive? In some sense, the answer is very easy, as always. So that's why I can make a video of it. Um, so let's write it down as a maximization problem given an inequality constraint. We're still supposed to maximize, with respect to x and y, the function f, and x, f of x and y, 3x plus 4y, such that, now here comes the, here's the question. How do I phrase the inequality constraint? If the points are supposed to come from underneath or on this function surface, then I'm going to, just by geometric intuition, I'm going to end up somewhere here, I guess. Uh, where okay, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to say because this is a two-dimensional projection of a three-dimensional object, but but somewhere around there I'm going to end up because there is the highest point um, of the function three x plus four y on the surface. Then I'm going to phrase my phrase my constraint that three x plus four y which is the point on the surface is less than or equal to, now you see where this is going, minus x plus one half squared minus y plus one half squared plus two, right? Because we want to find the highest point three x plus four y such that 3x plus 4y is still underneath or on the surface of the constraint. And that means that 3x plus 4y is less than or equal to the surface of the constraint. Yeah. And now you see what's going on, because now we have to write 3x plus 4y, and now we take the negative of the right-hand side over to the left-hand side, and we get plus x plus 1 half squared plus y plus one half squared minus two less than or equal to zero on the standard formulation. And now you see, okay, of course, uh, uh, this here now is our g of x 
and y and the inequality formulation the gradient of g is of course going to point in the opposite direction the, uh, of the one that was pointing in in the equality situation. All right, so in some sense we're, we're done here and we, we, we have found the reason, but let's just for completeness um, calculate this through uh, because the, the inequality constraint of course also looks a bit different. So uh, our, our Lagrange auxiliary function looks a bit different. We get 3x plus 4y minus lambda times the constraint, which is now 3x plus 4y plus x plus 1 half squared plus y plus 1 half squared minus 2. Um, and then I get for the first order conditions, Kuhn-Tucker conditions, uh, gradient with respect, uh, the, the partial with respect to x is 3 minus 3 lambda minus lambda times 2x plus 1. Um, which is equal to minus 2 lambda x minus 4 lambda plus 3. And let this be equal to 0. Um, so partial with respect to y, 4 minus 4 lambda minus lambda times 2 y plus 1. Yeah, now it's positive. Um, equals, uh, I multiply this out, minus 2 lambda y minus 5 lambda plus or be equal to uh, zero. And then the complementary slack condition is lambda times the constraint 3x plus 4y plus x plus 1 half squared plus y plus 1 half squared minus 2. It's equal to zero. Good. Um, the gradient of this new constraint g of x and y is 3 plus 2x plus 1 with respect to x and 4 plus 2y plus 1 with respect to y, uh, which is uh, 2x plus 4 and 2y plus 1. And the gradient of f, of course, is still 3 and 4. So again, we uh, 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 we solve so from uh, um, from the first. Uh, I can get, get these numbers here: one, two, and three, and then one. We get that lambda is three. Three over two x plus four. Two, we get that lambda is four over two y plus five. Um, and we need to solve for for x and y. Um, so what I'm doing is uh, I again use the use the constraint and. Um, multiply the whole thing out with this uh, just just what, what, what is this this is 3x plus 4y plus x squared plus x plus 1 quarter plus y squared plus y plus 1 quarter minus 2 be equal to 0 uh, so this is x squared plus y squared plus 4x plus 5y minus 3 half equal to 0 um, now I'm using the I'm using the first condition, so I'm going into one, and uh, um, oh sorry, I'm going into no no this not this is not what I want to do. I'm not going into one. I'm going into um, into relation two. But I'm using the lambda expression from one, so I'm replacing uh, lambda equal to three over two x plus four in two. So what does that give me? That gives me minus two times three over two x plus four. Of course, I could have done it the other way around. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and this is just the way 
and I prepared it here so that I don't get confuse myself along the way. 2x plus 4 plus 4 equal to 0. So that in the end ways lead to Rome, we just have to solve the system of equations. So whichever way you want to do it. Um, so after cleaning this up a bit, you get minus 6y minus 15 plus 8x plus 16 equal to 0. So let's write this as a as a second degree polynomial. So that's x squared plus four uh, x so, uh, plus and now all the terms with y y squared plus five y minus three half equal to zero. So this we can solve, and we get of course a function. In, uh, in y, so plus minus y square we get 4 minus y square plus 5y minus 3 half. And uh, this gives us Six y plus eight times. Let's do some other order combination here. Um, minus six y plus eight times minus two. This is the. Uh, this is upsetting me to this. Okay, never mind. Uh, minus two plus minus square root of four minus y squared plus 5y minus 3 half plus 1 equal to 0. So this is plus minus 8 times the square root of 4 minus y squared plus 5y minus 3 half is equal to 6y plus 15. So we square the whole ordeal. 64, 4 minus y squared plus 5y minus 3 half equals 6y plus 15 squared. Um, multiply this out with 256 minus 64y squared. Again, um, please do let me know in the comments if I'm making a mistake here, then we're going to fix that. But at least I looked at the point geometrically and it looked reasonable, um, which gives us the polynomial 100y squared plus 500y minus 127 equal to 0 or y squared plus 5y minus 127 over 100 equal to 0, which gives us the points y1 and 2 is uh, minus 5 half plus minus square root of 25 over 4 minus 127 over 100, uh, which is minus 5 half plus minus square root of 752, not exactly a nice number, but that's what it is, divided by 100. Uh, numerically, give or take, 0 0.2423 minus 5 half equal to 0. So, what's x? Well, I mean, x is now given here from the this equation is uh, one, the positive part. Um, yeah, so 
get I get two candidate points for Y. So again, I can go into uh, I can go into uh, condition here. Convince you can convince yourself that uh, I can convince myself that Y1 solves uh, uh, the positive uh, part uh, and Y2 solves the negative the negative part here for the for the square root and so uh, I get an, uh, an X1 that then corresponds to Y1 the positive part minus two plus the square root of four minus well you know the y square plus five y minus minus three halves so it's y square that's minus five half uh, plus seven five two divided by one hundred square plus five minus five half plus square root seven half two divided by one hundred uh, minus three half uh, the whole thing in parentheses and the whole thing uh, I'm gonna draw an ugly square root here but just say that this is divided by one half. Um, this is numerically as you can uh, check roughly equal to 0 0.0567 if I'm not mistaken and x2 then accordingly the negative square root well not square root because because you know it's gonna be ugly uh, 4 minus minus 5 half uh, minus square root of 7 5 2 divided by 100 squared plus 5 times minus 5 half minus square root 7 5 2 divided by 100 not squared uh, minus 3 half and uh, uh, the whole thing here I'm missing parentheses the whole thing half in parentheses square root and this is numerically equal to roughly minus 12.0567 um, well okay so now we have candidate points uh, x1 y1 and uh, x2 y2 um, we found relations for lambda here, oh, something something happened here. Um, I must have hit the the back button uh, a few times too aggressively. So this was four over two um, y plus five, and here I had condition three. Um, this was uh, minus two equal to zero. That must have been the back button. Okay, so here I found two expressions for for lambda, which of course now both must hold, yeah? uh, expressed in x and expressed in y. They must both be correct. Uh, so let's check what lambda is for our candidate points here. Um, so so three three over two x one plus four is roughly equal to 0 0.7293 and uh, 4 over 2y1 plus 5 is equal to also 0 0.7293 and lambda is positive so this is good um, what about x2 well x2 is negative so lambda is, and it's, it's largely negative 2 times uh, minus 4.0567 uh, plus which is x2 is roughly minus 0 0.7293 and 4 over 2y2 plus 5 is also negative 0 0.7293 so now by the Kuhn-Taka complementary slack condition lambda must be positive or equal to 0 so here we have a uh, a contradiction. So our uh, our only candidate point is three x one plus uh, x one plus uh, plus y one. So the the objective con uh, objective function evaluated 
in this point is 1.1391 and of course also evaluated in your um, in y2 x2 and we get of course also a negative number 3 times minus 5 point something uh, plus 4 times minus 4 point something uh, is obviously not going to give us a, a higher value yeah so so here we see that indeed lambda is positive which geometrically we have now of course uh, expected so 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 let's look at the at the geometric situation again so now i'm going to to plot this optimal point in our picture and not surprisingly I was a bit off with my guess here that it's somewhere somewhere up front it's actually surprisingly further back but again that's because of the projection of three dimensions onto onto two but you see uh, uh, clearly this uh, corresponds to to our intuition where where this point has to lie from this from this angle it also looks quite natural that it is where it is um, so you see that that indeed working with the same constraint function uh, in the equality case and in the inequality case gives you two different signs of lambda and the, the way to think about this is if we go back if we go back to the formulation of our of our constraint function here um, then we see this is exactly the reason um, of course you could ask well what if, if I now impose the uh, uh, the constraint function with opposite sign so if I now write plus x as so I hit the I hit the, the the reverse button here from one time to many again or my uh, my program is just dying on me. Anyway, what if I if I uh, uh, impose then the, the other sign here? If I now write on the on the right hand side plus x plus one half squared plus y plus one half squared minus two, and then bring it over to the other side, and then I'm again in the situation where uh, uh, where I have uh, uh, apparently a problem with my with my gradient. Then um, of course uh, we can we can very quickly graph that situation. Quickly is maybe a bit too little bit, but uh, relatively quickly by saying I'm plotting a minus g instead of a plus g. So we get a picture that looks like this. And uh, if you think about this, now if we want to. We want to maximize. Uh, of course, this will not pose a constraint, so we could just pick three x plus plus four y, uh, uh, infinitely large. And so, um, this I hope clarifies why in in inequality problems, uh, in inequality problems, so original picture again um, the Lagrange multiplier is always positive even in a geometric situation where our intuition at first pass is going to tell us uh, 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 this might be negative yeah so the the reason is the formulation of the constraint in the inequality case I hope this uh, this video helped you in understanding uh, optimization problems with respect to uh, equality and inequality constraints and uh, thank you for watching